Hello from Epcot. I'm here today at the Flower and Garden Festival to continue a series that I've done on this channel for several years now, which I'm going to be walking around Epcot to showcase the topiaries that are here this year. There's some new ones, and then also what I want to do is show off the gardens as well, and I've never done that before. So this is the list of all of the topiaries that they have this year, which there are some new ones as well as some returning favorites. And then the next page are all the garden destinations all around the park which I'm very excited to actually look at those. This is, of course, the brand new Encanto topiary that you encounter when you enter into the park. There's Mirabelle and Luisa and Antonio and Isabella. And this is cool. This is a very popular topiary at the front entrance. So I'm going to do my best to try to make sure that I see every single topiary and garden. So that's the one that I just saw. There's some butterflies way over there, as well as over here at the entrance. So I'm over in front of Spaceship Earth, obviously in my fun little mirror wall here that I like to talk to myself awkwardly in front of. I think I'm heading towards Connections first. Seems like a reasonably quiet day at Epcot today, which is pretty good. I am not anticipating getting any of the food attended from the festival, but I think I might go over to um, Regal Eagle for some lunch. So I'm in between Creations and Connections at the moment, heading over towards World Discovery. It's interesting how it's sort of categorized in the, uh, the Passport here. It's just by neighborhood, so I'm going to go ahead and try to start here in World Celebration and uh, do World Discovery, then World Nature, then head into the World Showcase for both the gardens and the topiaries. So this is outside of the Connections Eatery, and this is the Community Garden, and then there's Donald and Daisy as topiaries. I don't know if I'm going to read every single one of these signs, maybe just the first line, but it says, Community Garden. A community garden can exist in any place where people come together to cultivate the land. And there are just a bunch of different vegetables here, and then of course, Donald and Daisy, again, is topiaries, which is really neat. So apparently there's another garden somewhere inside the Connections Cafe that I'm looking for. So I came around the corner, this is the Connections Cafe, right over here, which is where Starbucks is. And I think that this is what I'm looking for, the Connections Conservatory Garden. I don't know what else it would be inside the Connections Cafe. So this one's pretty unique, definitely. I don't recall what's in this space when this festival's not going on, so that'll be sort of interesting too come back and look at it a little bit later. At all these gardens, again, I'm not going to be able to like showcase every single just type of plant or vegetable or fruit that's growing or on display, but also just the aesthetic and location of each one, I think. There are also some plants over there as well, and then there's some like in the entrance over here, so I do wonder if just this entire area is supposed to be the garden, which is pretty cool. So I'm back outside and heading right over here to a very unique garden. This is the Prehistoric Plants Garden. That is so incredibly unique and cool. Look at all these little dinosaurs here as well. I've never noticed this before. It doesn't show that it's new in the passport, which is a bit of a bummer because this is incredibly cool. And I just don't notice the gardens, or I, I haven't really before, or I, if I did notice them, I just sort of appreciated them as just sort of part of the uh, cosmetics of Flower and Garden. But this one's very neat. This all the little dinosaurs and then the prehistoric Plants. This is over by Mission Space. It's getting pretty hot now, so this is definitely going to be pretty useful. The hotter that it gets into spring and summer. There's Daisy and Donald. That's where I just came from over there, and I'm heading back over here towards a, another topiary. This one, of course, just does not change. This is Buzz Lightyear, appropriately over by Mission Space. Which is fun, right? I don't think it's really changed at all. It should be the only topiary in World Discovery. There's the Play Pavilion. Maybe. Who knows? At this point. I'll we'll definitely see what happens, but I think I'm heading back this way. There's some gardens over here, but then I want to cross over to, I think, World Nature at some point. Some of these gardens might be like in the children's play area over here, so I don't know how close I'm going to get to that one. So this is just a seating area over here. There's the playground, and I'm looking for a couple different gardens somewhere over here. So that's the creation shop, and I guess that this garden over here, this is just the family-friendly play garden that just goes around the circumference of the playground. But I'm also looking for the songbird meadow somewhere over here. So the playground's back over there, and this is the songbird meadow. Throughout history, songbirds have captivated humankind with their enchanting melodies and dazzling displays of color. And this is the songbird meadow, which is on the other side of um, creations. How cool. There are a bunch of little birdhouses all around and there are signs talking about avoiding pesticides, reducing plastics, and then planting native plants probably just to prosper songbirds. So there's a garden right here, but I'll come back to this one so I can head over to World Nature next, I think. There's a garden over here at the Honey Bistro. I think I might... I'll do that one once I head into the World Showcase, I think. So according to my passport, the floating gardens over here in World Nature specifically count as a garden. This year, there are some floating ones over here too, 
Maybe there's some more other than these. There's some on this side as well as over on the other side over there. But this is the next topiary that I wanted to encounter. This is of course Mufasa and Sarabi and Simba and Rafiki in topiary form. It's interesting how they choose to dye some of the uh, topiaries as opposed to other ones. But here's some floating topiaries right here. This is a little bit of a perspective of Communicore Hall. Oh, looks like they're making some progress right over here as well. But I'm heading towards the land. There should be a garden, I think, over here. There's the butterfly landing, which is the, the butterfly garden. And then I totally almost walked past Timon and Pumbaa. That's topiaries. They are awesome. I love the topiaries that I've got. And then here's another topiary in front of Journey to Imagination, which of course is Figment. Made up of succulents. Maybe it was right back over there. And then this is the butterfly landing, which is very appropriate being over here because Pooh Bear is catching butterflies across the lawn. But I'm heading inside. It's somewhat behind a cloud, so it's a little bit less vibrant in here than it normally would be. But this is easily just one of the best gardens and flowering garden exhibit in general that they have at the festival. Welcome to the Butterfly House. Spending time in nature is a great way to relax, rejuvenate, and practice mindfulness, the art of living in the moment. As you walk through this garden, take a moment to notice all the living things around you, from the smallest butterfly to the tallest tree. And I'm sure that I'm going to be coming back here with Brennan on a future trip. It definitely gets pretty busy in here, pretty popular, but I am heading back outside to continue my walk around the showcase. There's the butterfly topiary. Again, it looks like with some succulents over here. Do you remember when they used to hand out applesauce after you came out of that? I miss that. So I'm heading over towards the land. There's some more topiaries back over here, but I think that this is a garden right here, maybe, that I might have missed. There are also some uh, butterfly topiaries over here at the entrance to the butterfly landing, obviously. So this might be the bold bromeliads garden right over here, which is across from the butterfly garden. Which is pretty fun. It says, when it comes to the benefits of sunlight and fresh air, the sky is the limit. Interesting. Is this that garden? Or is it maybe over there somewhere? I'm not totally sure, but there are some more uh, floating topiaries in the water here. It just looks so beautiful. Wow. Maybe I take that back. I think I see a sign over here. Is this the... It is. This is the bold Bromeliad's garden. So I don't know what that garden was that I just saw over there. Well, let's see if I can read this sign. It says bold Bromeliad's Bromeliads can be found in an astounding variety of locations from dry, rocky hillsides to tall trees and the rainforest. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Well, you can get like a nice, like, just like straight shot view of a little celebration right there. But I'm not heading into the land, not right now. I want to make sure that I get all of my gardens and my topiaries in, uh, in just all of that world celebration, world discovery, world nature. So I'm heading straight ahead over there to some more topiaries. So there's another butterfly topiary right over there. But here are Bo Peep and Woody and Bo Peep's sheep over in front of a, what's going to be whatever this is called, the, the community court hall. So that should be all the topiaries and all of the gardens in both world nature and world discovery. So I'm heading back towards world celebration to go down that main bridge into the World Showcase. So now I can finally head towards the World Showcase. I'm also really hungry, so I really want to make it over to the American Adventure pretty quickly. I see there are floating gardens over here as well, but I'm going right over here to that garden, I think. So before I head to that one, I wanted to showcase the topiaries here that are the entrance into the, I guess, World Showcase, the bridge to get over to the World Showcase. So there's Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Pluto, Chip and Dale right here, which this one is really cool. This one's also very popular in terms of a photo opportunity. So this is the Blossoms of Fragrance Garden. All your nose to this scented garden and cherish lasting memories with the help of fresh, unforgettable fragrances and their many botanical varieties. Of all five senses, scent is most strongly connected to memory. A note of lilac, a hint of citrus, any one fragrance has the power to evoke vivid recollections with staggering clarity. Well, cool. And then there's some topiaries over here, too. The, the butterfly topiaries. So this is actually really cool. Each of these sections are split up into fresh citrus and floral scents, and you can actually go up and smell them. Alright, so I'm heading down the walkway to get into the little showcase. I don't think that these are supposed to be um, a garden in particular, but my next topiary is right here. So, of course, this is massive Goofy, which consistently awes me, intimidates me, inspires me, terrifies me. Every emotion of love is this 
Topiary. Now I'm finally in the World Showcase, but I'm sort of heading back over here to the uh, Honey Bistro Garden. So after I step over here, it should be pretty smooth sailing, I think, around the World Showcase now that I have like a singular direction to head. So I think that this garden's supposed to be sort of just surrounding the entire area over here. Just all of what, what bees are and represent, and then the, the plants that are associated with them. It's very aesthetically pretty, without a doubt. I'm gonna head over there to the other side of the booth. Too, just in case. There's a sign that says the Honey Bee Show Garden. Follow the honeybee on a journey of discovery from how they make one of nature's sweetest creations to their important role in our ecosystem to ways we can help them thrive. Okay, so there are more actual signs over here, so that just might be the outer part of the Honey Bee Show Garden because there are more displays over here too and more signs. This is cool. There's this sign right here, how many bees tall are you? And a few other signs and photo opportunities as well that I don't want to be as invasive as I feel at the moment. And it says, thanks for being a, thanks for being a friend to honeybees. Okay. So there were multiple signs of this on both sides of Honey Bistro Garden. Okay, now I'm actually ready to head into the World Showcase, I think. All right, so now I'm heading towards Canada and ending up in Mexico, I think. It does look a little bit busier over here. So according to this, there are no topiaries or gardens in Canada, but I see these presumably geese right here, and then this is just visually one of the most beautiful areas in Epcot, just all of the flowers over here. So I disagree. Passport. I suppose these are inspired by the Victoria Gardens of British Columbia. These gardens are a reflection of horticulture as a work of art and a labor of love. Wait a minute, they totally are in the passport. It's just out of order for whatever reason, but there they are. The geese. And then I totally walked past these topiaries for whatever reason. There's Bambi and Thumper and Flower appropriately at the Flower and Garden Festival. They changed Thumper a little bit. Thumper used to look just so goofy. Most of the topiaries actually looked incredibly goofy, but then they made them look good for whatever reason. But okay, so here they are. The, uh, the, the Bambi and Friends topiaries over here by the refreshment port. So according to the passport, there are a lot of gardens as well as topiaries in the UK. So of course there's Captain Hook and Peter Pan, which have moved pretty consistently. A lot of these topiaries have. And then there's Tick Tock the Croc. So this is the Shakespeare Garden right here that I don't know if I've ever noticed before. I'm trying to pay attention to what's new according to this. It says, William Shakespeare often used flowers in exotic gardens to help set the scenes for his plays. Okay. And then they have some little displays here, I think referencing particular works of Shakespeare, presumably. So that's pretty neat. This is not new, apparently, allegedly, but I'm heading to these topiaries, which are definitely not new. I think that they've gotten casually spruced up over the years, but there's Eeyore, Piglet, and Tigger. And then right next to them are Rabbit and Pooh Bear. Okay, and there should be a garden back over here, I think, at the very back. So this is a new garden, apparently, allegedly. This is the Topiary Heritage Garden. Topiary gardening is the art of guiding living plants into ornate and sometimes even fantastical shapes. Okay. So there are three types of topiary, freeform, standard, and shrub. So there's Mickey Mouse, and then there's an elephant. Over here, this is pretty cool. And then just like all these flowers in here as well. Okay, so this says specifically, this is a shrub topiary. A single shrub topiary can take up to 10 years to produce. Forming the topiary around a sculpted metal frame, gardeners need to consistently clip, shear, and tie the plant in order to create these imaginative shapes. So this is an elephant, a shrub topiary. This is topiary at Disney Parks. When Walt Disney traveled overseas and discovered the stunning topiaries found in Europe's grand palaces and parks, he dreamed of sharing his experience with Disneyland guests. Interesting. So this, this sort of just showcases that the uh, legacy of topiary and Disney theme parks began, sort of just because of Walt Disney. So this is an example of freeform topiary. Dating back hundreds of years, freeform topiary is the oldest version of this fascinating art. Using sharp, well-oiled garden shears, gardeners skillfully transform shrubs, shrubs, and trees into shapes like spheres or rectangles. I'm trying to find the remaining type of topiary, but I do not see it. So I guess that these are considered standard topiaries. If we have the uh, the shrub and then the freeform, this would be the standard. Right? So this is the English Tea Garden, which there's a sign right over here. I'm going to go read that. There's another sign right over here, but this sign says, This small evergreen tree grows dark green leaves and small pink or white flowers. Once picked, these leaves, less commonly the flower buds, are treated with special processes on their way to becoming different varieties of tea. Okay. Well, that's fun. So this is just, this is a tea garden, which is the name of the garden. And then there's some little displays. 
like this. Have some tea and, and biscuits. And there are obviously some signs just sort of showcasing what types of tea there are in this garden. And little butterfly display as well. So actually I have one more topiary and that is right over here, which I thought this was a garden, but I think it's an entire topiary situation. So that is the Tinkerbell topiary. And what I did not know is that all of these little ornate details, these are fairy houses. So this is Tinkerbell's fairy house garden. And I never really thought about that. I thought it had something to do with like a garden, but it's just part of the topiary aesthetic, which I'm so glad that I now know that because these are just all over the place. And I was always, very curious, and I don't know why I never really put that together, but now I know that. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to France, where there should be a good amount of gardens and topiaries as well. So this is Cogsworth and Lumiere, and the Garden of the Pennington is right over there. But this is really cool, so Cogsworth's pendulum, I guess, is going back and forth, and then Lumiere's flames are lit. This is a really cool addition for these. And then there's the other one that I'm going to. I'll go to this garden over here, though, first. So this is the Bauquet Garden. I'm just kidding, this is the Bouquet Garden to grow flowers for decorative arrangements, the gardener's seed plants with long stems and rows. This careful cultivation provides easy paths for harvesting and ensures that taller plants don't block smaller plants from the sun. So that is pretty interesting and very unique. And of course, that's the entrance to Remy's Ratatouille adventure. I'm right back over there, which I am not writing. And then here's the Beauty and the Beast topiary, which absolutely set the standard for modern topiaries and continually Looks very impressive. It is pretty windy today, which I will take in addition to the occasional cloud coverage because it's so hot today. But my next technically, I guess, topiary stop is over here in between France and Morocco. So this is Miss Piggy and Kermit's who for the longest time were over in France. But it looks like they were moved over here in between France and Morocco, interestingly. I guess there was already a lot going on over there. So this is the Spice Garden. And it says, in many cultures, spices were once considered more valuable than gold. Even today, many communities are defined by their signature spices and herb blends created from plant leaves, stems, roots, seeds, and flowers. And then, of course, it showcases multiple different herbs and spices in the garden here. I feel like I've seen every single Spike the Bee, by the way, just by looking at all of these gardens so far today. So this has probably ruined the uh, pollination exploration scavenger hunt for me, but we might still figure out a way to do it. That could be interesting. So that's it for Morocco. So I guess now I'm heading over to Japan. So this garden I am absolutely the most excited about. This is new. This is Shishi Odoshi, which translates to scare deer. Interesting. These traditional Japanese water fountains were originally crafted to ward off any hungry creatures tempted to graze in an enticing garden. So the water features each sort of create a different sound. They're connecting lines up here to this tambourine and this gong, it looks like, and these wind chimes, and these maracas down here. As well as over there, it looks like there's like a triangle, there's like a, a water pail. Well, that's so interesting. I'm waiting for any other sound effects to happen at the moment. I wonder how long it takes. Some of it doesn't look like it quite makes it. And there are multiple other different areas around me here. That's so cool. That's so interesting. I'm just mesmerized by this. Oh, it's probably the the wind right now that's probably impacting all of this a little bit. In terms of just like the water making it to these uh, various pieces of bamboo, it looks like. Let's see if one more sound happens over here. That was a lot at once, cool. This is a little bit closer of a look. We can see the, the line that connects to the various sound effects here. So they're pretty much all the same when it comes to the wind chimes, and the gong, and the triangle, and then the drums here as well. That's cool. And then there's one more back over here that I noticed the other day. This one's like way back in the corner. Cool. Yeah, the wind's going to really impact this. 
that was definitely the coolest garden I think I've ever seen at Epcot. So I'm pretty sure that there was a garden up there from what I saw when we were here last time. That was a lot of koi fish. Wow. There are a couple more gardens though in Japan, which I think is incredibly cool. This is the Kokedama Garden. It says, like bonsai, Kokedama are a Japanese art form made from the earth. Unlike their potty counterparts, these ornamental plants are relatively easy to craft with the right plant, some string, and moss. Any gardener can make a Kokedama, however green their thumb. So it looks like that's what these are here, maybe? I have never noticed that statue in my entire life, and I don't know if that's only here for the festival or not, but that is one of the most surprising things I think I've ever seen at Epcot. Right there, I will have to remember to come back after the festival to see if that is part of the, uh, the festival or not. That's kind of kind of terrifying. Okay. Look at this. So it's like it's like a potted plant, but not in a pot. Does that make sense? Interesting. Look at all these fixtures. And then it looks like this is a continuation of the Shishi Odoshi. All over here, this bamboo. Oh, interesting. So this is all over the Japan Pavilion. And then there are these bonsai trees on the other side of the walkway here, which I think is part of the bonsai tree um, garden, which I think I could read about probably down there. But look at all these bonsai trees. Japan with the gardens is incredible. I put a memorable order for the American Adventure over at Regal Eagle because there is not a garden over in the American Adventure and I don't think that there is a topiary either. No, there is. There is. There's a new one. So this says bonsai and the ancient Japanese art of bonsai trees and shrubs are cultivated with exquisite care to create miniature likenesses of much larger trees. Interesting. So those are all over here, it looks like. I'm embarrassed that I forgot about Siyana, the other new topiary this year at the Flower and Garden Festival. It looks so realistic and I'm so glad that they're just sort of committing to this, this realism of topiary. It looks so good, but my food is now ready over at the Regal Eagle. Right now the Garden Rocks performance is happening on the American Adventure stage over there in the uh, American Gardens Theater. And it's really good, it's really fun. Okay, time to get some barbecue during a food festival, right? Okay, so I got the sliced Texas beef brisket sandwich there with some fries, some seasoned fries on the side, and then some macaroni and cheese. I got every single sauce, and then I have a Dr. Pepper here that I brought with me in my pants. So I'm going to enjoy this and enjoy the atmosphere inside the Regal Eagle restaurant that I don't normally get to eat at because there's always a festival going on and then I'll be back outside to try to find the rest of the topiaries and gardens. Alright, so I just finished with dinner which was delicious and now I'm back outside. The sun is starting to set and I'm heading over to um, Italy. So Italy does have several potted flowers back over there but I think that the garden's back here in the back along with the topiaries. So there's Lady and the Tramp in topiary form which they are looking beautiful. And then I think that this is Garden Italiano the garden for Italy because it's just nothing but flowers all, all the way around this entire area. There's no sign for that, but I'm presuming that this is the garden for Italy. Just all of these potted flowers. And then again, the topiaries, which are right there, which have moved a couple times. There are flowers pretty much everywhere in Italy, honestly. Which I, I, I don't know if these have been here before. I can't remember. I imagine not, right? But regardless, that was the easiest pavilion to showcase the flowers in. It's very simple, beautiful, and to the point. And now I'm heading over to the uh, the next, I don't know, pavilion, right? Germany. The flowers over here are beautiful as well. There's a special event happening over here, which happens quite consistently in Italy. There is also this flower bed over here, which this actually might be the garden for Italy, thinking about it. Well, paint me green and send me to Canada because I'm officially a silly goose. This is the Garden Italiano. From fresh spaghetti sauce to favorite pizza toppings, this Tuscan kitchen garden features all the produce and herbs needed to create a classic Italian feast. Okay, so this is the Garden Italiano. This is pretty. I remember when the seven dwarves used to be here and then they moved them right over there, which is where I'm heading next. Cool. The sun is starting to set and then harmonies will be starting pretty soon, I think. So this is easily one of the most popular topiaries. I'm going to head over here, I think, to look at the, uh, go look at the gardens. So this is the miniature garden. It says, look closely and you will see diminutive cottages built from bits of nature by fantastical woodland creatures. Inspired by European folklore, these mythical creatures called gnomes are said to live in the ground and protect crops, flowers, and treasure. With luck, you might just catch a glimpse of a magical gnome or two who inhabit these tiny dwellings. And I already found my gnome. Right down there. 
I know these tiny little cottages here in this entire little gnome community. There's another gnome. Oh, the gnomes are just everywhere, aren't they? This is adorable. I really just don't think I've ever given the time to these gardens, and now I wholesomely regret that. I wholeheartedly regret that. Wholesomely. That makes sense. Look at all of these houses. This is so adorable. <laughs> I love this. I love this detail. I love this concept. This is incredible. And then of course here's Snow White and Dopey. And their lights are starting to come on for the evening, which means the sun is going to be set very soon. And then right across from them are all of the dwarves. So there's Doc. There's Grumpy. There's Happy. There's Sleepy. There's... Nope, this is a... Uh, Wait, okay, that's Sneezy. This is Bashful? Yes, okay. Oh, I almost, I almost failed. Thought I recovered. Okay, yay for seven dwarves. These are some of my favorites, of course. Everyone knows that who watches this. So I just have a few more countries to go, a few more gardens, a few more topiaries, and then I am done. This is probably the most fun I think I've ever had doing a topiary tour, just a continued experience around Epcot, just showcasing all the different topiaries, but I've almost made it to China. So this is of course one of my absolute most favorite topiaries. This particular panda right here. All of these pandas are honestly wonderful, but just this one, love this one. So the gardens that I'm looking for here are the China Zodiac Garden and then the Bamboo Garden. I'm presuming that this is the Bamboo Garden, which sort of just goes all the way around this trail right here, and then I think that this is going to be the Zodiac Garden. Honestly, I was pretty ignorant to the fact that there are multiple different types of bamboo, and now I'm aware of that. So this is the Zodiac Garden, this is the sheep, this is the snake, this is the horse, this is the rat, this is the dog, this is the rooster, which Vernon is a rooster. The rooster's a hard worker. Shrewd, outspoken, and definite in decision-making because of this, they may at times seem boastful. The rooster is an extravagant dreamer. Interesting. The rooster would do well as a restaurant owner, publicist, soldier, or world traveler. And then on the other side, this is the dragon. This is the pig. This is the tiger. This is the ox. And then finally, this is the monkey. And I am a monkey. The monkey is witty and intelligent. Oh, if I don't say so myself. Because of their magnetic personality, they are often well-liked. The monkey would be wise to be more trusting of others and is likely to find success in any field. Hmm. So there's a sign for the Chinese zodiac. It says, based on the lunar calendar, the zodiac assigns animals to each year to 12-year cycle. According to Chinese legend, long ago, 12 animals quarreled about who would lead the rotation of years. So the gods held a contest at a riverbank to decide whichever animal first crossed the river will be first in the cycle. The animals that followed would be designated years corresponding to their placement in the race. Interesting. So, essentially begins with the sign of the rat and ends with the pig. I'm trying to see if there's a sign for the, uh, the bamboo garden. But so far I don't see it. And here it is, the sign for the bamboo garden that I almost walked past. Did you know bamboo are members of the grass family? I did not. They're the tallest of all grasses. Okay. Bamboo can be found in a variety of colors, patterns, and sizes, and in Chinese culture, a gift of bamboo is thought to bring luck to those who receive it. So I am heading into Norway now, and I can see some topiaries right here. There are no gardens, though. And of course, these topiaries are Anna and Elsa, some of the most popular topiaries probably ever at this festival. And there should be one more topiary in Norway, and I'm going to unnecessarily walk through the state church to go over there. And there it is. It's the uh, it's the troll. I honestly cannot remember if they've had this effect with this troll with this lit lantern in previous years. It looks like he's been improved slightly over the years from what he used to look like, which was terrifying, even more terrifying. I think that I'm just barely going to beat the sunset. The sun is technically set, but just before it gets dark, because I'm heading into Mexico. There's some plants over here, which I would presume would be part of the desert garden. Maybe? I don't see the sign over here, but it looks like this would be part of it, right? There's also these structures here, these plants on the other side of the fountain. Here, this has to be attributed with, with one of these gardens, I think. There's one over here as well. So this is the tropical rainforest, this pathway over here that's getting progressively darker. It says hot and humid climates can create highly adaptive plant species. In rainforests, trees search for sunlight, treating the dark forest floor below. 
Meanwhile, extraordinary orchids extend their roots to absorb water while attracting pollinators with their intricate petals. So it should be getting a little bit brighter. This will be a little bit easier to see during the daylight, obviously, but at least I'm going to see the majority of the plants here. And this is uh, the ramp that leads up to the temple over here, but this was uh, pretty. So I have a couple more that I need to find, a couple more gardens, and then some topiaries on the way out of the pavilion. So it started to get very busy now at Epcot, but I did find the desert garden. So it says, dust blown desert plateaus and rocky dried creek beds may be inhospitable to many forms of plant life, but not succulents and cacti. Okay, so that's that's what this is. This is the, this is new. This is the desert garden here in, um, Mexico. So I have one more garden to find, and I think that I might have missed it. It's the Extraordinary Orchids. So I'm heading back into the pavilion to try to find it. I might have just walked past it, sort of back over here. I cannot find these Extraordinary Orchids. They're not very extraordinary if I can't find them, right? So I came back to this pathway, and I suppose that this is the Extraordinary Orchids garden? Because these are orchids? Okay, so it's, I guess it's both. I was looking for like a sign, but I guess that this is it. I came inside the pavilion just to make sure that there are no orchids in here and I don't see any. So I'll just have to presume that these are the extraordinary orchids without verification of a sign. I don't know if I call them extraordinary. I'm probably just missing the sign, honestly, but they are orchids and they do look, they do look pretty extraordinary, I'll, I'll admit. So my adventure today concludes with one final trio, I suppose, of topiaries. And here they are, Jose, Panchito, and Donald, the three caballeros, which look like they've been spruced up a little bit, I think, maybe. But I think that was it. I think that that was my topiary and garden tour around Epcot this year for the Flower and Garden Festival. They just had to subtly light Goofy here just to make him even more intimidating, didn't they? I didn't show off the Flower and Garden merchandise, which I never really do that because other people do it a little bit more thoroughly and, and, and just better than I would. Merchandise is just not really my... I don't know. I don't really get very excited about it. But I'm heading back to the car now after a very eventful day at Epcot. Just one of the more exciting days I think that I've had. It's completely dark right now. Flower Garden started a week ago. There might be a, a new nighttime light show on Spaceship Earth. But I'm not sure. This might be it. So now that was the previous show, the Pocahontas Colors of the Wind light show on Spaceship Earth. And I think that there is a new Encanto show. <laughs> So that was the Encanto light show in Space Earth. So thank you for coming with me tonight to the Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot to do a topiary and garden tour around the park. I was considering doing this as a one-take vlog, which I'm glad that I did not do that because that would have been like a five-hour long video just exploring around World Celebration, World Discovery, World Nature, World Showcase, just to see all the gardens, topiaries, and then just having dinner at Regal Eagle was pretty nice to just be able to eat at Epcot and not feel committed to go to a food booth is kind of nice. Sometimes that's why I wanted to take advantage of it tonight so that myself and Brenda could come back to actually go to the festival in the future to enjoy some more food and drinks, maybe the Garden Rocks concert and just other aspects of this festival, maybe Spike's scavenger hunt, but I don't know because I saw a lot of the Spike's Bee tonight, so it might not be very fair, but we'll see if we can make that work. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great day and goodbye. <laughs>